Good afternoon and welcome to Thursday's Lunchtime News. Thousands of complaints, two shows off the air, one resignation, one suspension. Today the BBC is finally asking its management, how did we get to this point? This lunchtime, the Director General, Mark Thompson, is explaining to the BBC Trust, which is meant to look out for the interests of licence fee payers, why those answer phone messages ever made it to air. The BBC is fighting a desperate battle to contain the crisis. Russell Brand has handed in his resignation, saying the prank calls he made with Jonathan Ross were a really, really stupid thing to do. Ross's show's been pulled this week, but he's still clinging on to his £18 million deal with the broadcaster. And whilst Ross is off air, licence fee payers are contributing toward the £16,000 a day he is being paid for doing nothing. So far, it's the presenters who face the most criticism for the lewd calls. Now attention turns to the management who cleared the show for broadcast and to the bosses who were slow to apologise. Nina Nanar reports now on the crisis talks that will decide where the buck should stop. Good morning, Mr Thompson. Do you have a, a few moments for a quick word? Will there be any more resignations today, Mr Thompson? No time to talk. After being accused of reacting far too slowly to the escalating scandal, this is a BBC now in a hurry to get things sorted out. The Director General of the Corporation left home this morning for the journey to a special meeting of the group whose job it is to protect the interests of the BBC's licence fee payers. At the BBC Trust headquarters in central London, after facing questions from the waiting media, Mr Thompson was to deliver the findings of BBC management's investigation into how the offending broadcast was allowed on air. I'm just going to go into the meeting with the BBC Trust right now, if I can get past the gentleman. The Ferrari has already claimed one victim, Russell Brand, who resigned yesterday, but also asked for Jonathan Ross to be spared the sacking that many are calling for. You know, what Jonathan did, while silly, was not malicious. He's not a malicious man, he's a family man, he's a lovely, kind gentleman that did something that was a little bit silly. It's been reported that Leslie Douglas, the controller of Radio 2, was prepared to resign if members of her production staff were sacked. But this PR expert says the BBC mismanaged the whole scandal and more heads must roll. Clearly, the media ran this story uh, and pulled the rug from underneath uh, the BBC's, you know, tiny little dainty feet. And when that happens, you are having to react to what the media are saying and not to what you should be saying. But it's been quite interesting that senior BBC officials have kept their head very, very far below the dark parapet. Ross, on a reputed £18 million contract with the BBC, has apologised, but his Friday night chat show has been pulled during his suspension. The corporation may try hard to keep one of their biggest stars, but with complaints now up to 30,000, there will almost certainly be more casualties. Nina Nanar, ITV News. Well, Geraint Vincent is at the BBC Trust HQ in central London. So, Geraint, what action could the Trust take now? Well, Romilly, I understand that just in the last few minutes that meeting that the Trust is holding has now ended. We're expecting a statement later today. Now, in terms of the decision they've made, well, they might decide to bow to the media clamour and sack Jonathan Ross. Uh, that would be an extremely uh, big decision, firstly because he is such a huge star and such a big ratings winner, but also because they might find grounds for dismissal actually quite difficult to find. And that is because, however offensive those remarks that Jonathan Ross made were, this was a recorded uh, programme and the decision to broadcast the programme was nothing to do with Jonathan Ross. Now, while the, the meeting may have found it relatively easy to identify and decide to take action against the member of the management team or the production team that cleared that programme for air, what they're going to do with Jonathan Ross is an altogether thornier and more difficult question. And I would guess that was why uh, this meeting went on for so long this morning. OK, Geraint, thank you.